Jamie Dimon called out the Federal Reserve Bank last week in an interview because he said that inflation isn't coming down the way that the Federal Reserve Bank says. He says that we might see higher interest rates for longer, and he also says that we still have a possibility for a hard landing while everybody says that this talk of a recession is all over. Take a listen. So I, I'm just a little cautious that thinking that looking monthly numbers, whether or not they're accurate is going to tell you what next year is going to bring. He's referencing the latest inflation numbers that although inflation has calmed down a little bit, that doesn't mean that inflation inflation is going to continue to stay calm in 2025. And interestingly, part of the reason why he's saying this is because the Federal Reserve Bank keeps printing money to fund the government spending, which ultimately creates more inflation. Remilitarization, the restructuring of trade, there's going to be some of that. We don't know exactly how much yet. That's going to be inflationary. The green economy is going to be inflationary. Fiscal spending is inflationary. Uh, commodity prices, if you look at commodities and oil, copper, there's a chance of being short supply down the couple of years from now. So there are a lot of things out there which can drive inflation. But again, not today. You know, I'm talking about a, a 12 months, 24 months from now. So what I want to do in this video is three things. Number one is I want to talk about Jamie Dimon's concerns about our economy. Number two is I want to talk about where inflation is heading. And number three is I want to talk about what you need to know and understand. So let's start by talking about number one, Jamie Dimon's concerns about our economy. But before we do, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Element. Now, for those of you that live active lifestyles and watch your diet, I think you'll get a lot of value out of this because I try to work out every day. And so for me, staying hydrated is very important because if I don't, I get headaches and I just don't feel good. And I noticed earlier this year that I bought a big water bottle and no matter how much water I drank, I just kept feeling thirsty. And the more water I would drink, I would get even more thirsty. And that's when I realized that it wasn't the water, it was that I didn't have enough salt in my diet. And that's when I came across ads for Element on the internet and I gave it a shot and it pretty much immediately changed how I felt, which is why I asked them for a sponsorship. Element is a zero calorie electrolyte drink that has zero sugars and zero artificial colors and it works to improve your health by optimizing your sodium levels. And the way it works is super simple. You just open one up, you mix it with a glass of water, you stir it up and then it tastes great. So if you've been struggling with staying hydrated, you feel like you get fatigued, you feel like you get headaches, you should probably give Element a try because it's super simple to make and it tastes pretty good too. And the best part of all is that because you're watching the Minority Mindset, if you use my link down in the description below and then you purchase any drink mix, Element is going to give you a free sample pack with eight different flavors that you can try out what they have and see which one you like the most. So if you want to optimize your nutrition with Element, I got the link to how you can do that and get your free sample pack with a drink mix down in the description below where you can go to drinkelement.com slash justbreathe. That's drinklmnt.com slash justbreathe. Now going back to Jamie Dimon's concerns, what he says is a lot of people in America are really honing in on the short-term inflation trends, but what he says is that that might not be an indication of what's coming with inflation next year or the year after that. And the main culprit to this, according to Jamie Dimon, is government spending and government borrowing. Take a look. But I think the fiscal stimulus still is high and it's a global phenomenon. Yes. You know, since COVID, a lot of money was spent, there was a lot of QE, and those things are still kind of surging through the system. Now I know, these numbers look very overwhelming, but let me break down exactly what this says and means, so stick with me for just a minute. Back in the year 2019, before the pandemic, the United States government spent $4.4 trillion, and then they ran a deficit of $948 billion. I'll explain what that means in just a minute. Then 2020 came, the pandemic hit, and the government spent $7 trillion. They ramped up spending, and they also ramped up their national deficit to $3.1 trillion. Then 2021, the government spent $6.8 trillion with a deficit of $2.7 trillion. 2022, they spent $6.1 trillion with a deficit of $1.4 trillion. 2023, they spent $6.1 trillion again with a deficit of $1.7 trillion. And then in 2024, the S estimation is that the government is going to spend $6.5 trillion with a deficit of around $1.6 trillion. And then the estimation for 2025 is that the government is going to spend $7.3 trillion with a deficit of $1.8 trillion dollars. Now, the reason why this is so significant is that between the years 2019 and 2024, over the last five years, government spending has ramped up by 49%. Well, inflation over the last five years, at least reported inflation, is under 23%. That means the government is spending money twice as fast as what the reported inflation numbers are. And that money has to come from somewhere because the government ultimately only has one source of income, and the income is taxpayers through tax dollars. 
You go to work to get paid, you pay the government taxes. You run a business and you make a profit, you pay the government taxes. You sell your investments for a profit, you pay the government taxes. So now, the government makes tax dollars, and the more tax dollars they make, the more they can spend. But what they've been doing is they've been spending more money, but they've also been increasing the national deficit. Remember, back before the pandemic, the government had less than a trillion dollar national deficit. Now, it's a 1.6 trillion dollar national deficit. So what does that mean if they spend money they don't have? Well, think of it this way. If the government wants to go and build a highway and it's going to cost a million dollars, hypothetically, they can do two things to go out and raise the money. They can go and impose a tax on you and me and say, we're going to tax these people and we're going to raise a million dollars to go out and build this highway, which means they have to go and get the votes, they have to go and get this approved, and then they have to go out and levy this tax on us to raise the money to build a highway. But that can be difficult because tax hikes are not very exciting unless you're saying, tax that person, not me, right? That's kind of how it works. But that is not so easy. And so what the government has been doing is instead of going out and raising taxes to increase their spending, they've been increasing the spending without increasing taxes, which might sound kind of weird. How do you then increase spending without increasing taxes? How do you keep spending more money without making any more money? And what they've been doing is working to borrow money to keep spending money. So now, where is the government borrowing this money from? Well, you and I can go out and lend money to the United States government. This is called a treasury, right? Anybody can go and lend money to the United States government, but the biggest purchaser of these treasuries is the Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve Bank is a central bank of the United States, and they have this special little power to essentially print money. So now, if the government wants to spend $1.6 trillion that they don't have, they want to build highways, they want to build bridges, they want to do whatever they want to do, now they got to raise the money to do that. Well, I don't have a trillion dollars, you don't have a trillion dollars, so what do they do? They call up the Federal Reserve Bank and they say, hey, we need a trillion and a half, or actually a trillion point six. What's the difference? Just a little rounding error. Can you give us that money? And so now the Federal Reserve Bank can print this money, they'll lend it to the United States government, and now the United States government suddenly has this extra $1.6 trillion to go out and spend in the economy. Now they can go out and invest in building bridges, building highways, they can create jobs, they can do all these things which stimulates the economy. But there's a little consequence here, which is what Jamie Dimon is talking about, which is, well, inflation. Because remember, what caused the inflation problems that we've been seeing? Now, a lot of people have different opinions on this, but the ultimate root cause, the root cause of the inflation was the Federal Reserve Bank in the first place. Because when you print money, that devalues the individual dollars that we have. Right? If the Federal Reserve Bank doubles the amount of dollars in circulation, that effectively reduces the value of each individual dollar that we have in our bank accounts and in our pockets, because now there's more currency available. The value of each individual dollar goes down. Right, you can print more dollars, but you can't print more wealth. And that's what you have to understand, that there's a difference between what we call money or currency and wealth. See, it's easy to print the dollars, but the wealth has to actually be created. You have to work to create the wealth. It costs about 13 cents to print a $100 bill, but it takes a lot of work to produce $100 worth of labor. Now, of course, $100 worth of labor today is different than $100 worth of labor back in 2019. But this is where what Jamie Dimon says is, well, we're still ramping up spending. I mean, we're spending six and a half trillion dollars now through the government, which is almost 50% more than what we were doing five years ago, which was already extremely high. Now it's extremely, extremely high. We've ramped up our national deficit by more than 60%, which means the government is spending more and more money they don't have, which is inflationary. Now you might say, well, some of these things are good, which they might be, but you know what? Buying organic food is also nice, but you got to have the money to be able to afford it. And this is where the question is, what does the government do first? Should they be able to afford it or should they just spend the money first? And that's kind of the dilemma. And this is where Jamie Dimon is saying, sure, you can spend the money first, but then you're going to have to pay the consequence later. You're going to have to pay the price later through inflation. And this brings me to the second part of the video, which is really understanding where we are with inflation and where inflation is going. So if you back up to the beginning part of 2024, when we got the January inflation numbers, they came in hotter than expected. When we got the February inflation numbers, they came in hotter than expected. When we got the March inflation numbers, they came in hotter than expected. And then when we got the April inflation numbers, they came in at expectations. And this is why a lot of people right now are finally calling the win on inflation, that inflation is cooling down because the inflation numbers in April came in at expectations, that this 3.4% inflation is now finally cooling inflation, so we've won this fight on inflation. But this is where what Jamie Dimon is saying is, number one, 
Well, the government is doing all of this spending, which can make inflation worse next year. But secondly, 3.4% inflation is not a win on inflation, especially when the Federal Reserve Bank says that they want 2% inflation. It's still quite a bit of a ways away. Now, you got to remember that 2% inflation is still not 0% inflation. 2% inflation means the price of things continue to rise, just not as fast as they were before. So now, as we think about where is inflation going to go, well, it really just depends on what the Federal Reserve Bank does. Because there's a lot of pressure on the Federal Reserve Bank to help stimulate the economy. Because the economy and inflation work kind of hand-to-hand -hand in different directions. Because if the Federal Reserve Bank were to cut interest rates tomorrow, what would that do? That would stimulate the economy. Because then more people would buy houses. Real estate agents would make more commissions. Mortgage brokers would make more commissions. Title agents would make more commissions. Home prices would probably go up. You'd have more equity in your home. You'd see more refinancing. You'd see more spending. But then the consequences the inflation problem also gets worse as well. And so this is where the Federal Reserve Bank is kind of playing this balancing act, where on one hand they're trying to balance inflation, on the other hand they're trying to balance the economy and not tip the United States into a deep recession. And so now, when they're trying to do this, this tight rope walk, what they want to do is bring inflation down without having a deep recession. Because guess what? While a lot of people say we're already in a recession, the economy is still strong. People are still getting paid. People still have jobs. They might not be the best jobs. People might be struggling. It's still not what we were back in 2008 when we were facing real hardship in the economy. I get it. A lot of Americans are facing hardship, but it could be worse. And this is where the Federal Reserve Bank is doing this balancing act during an election year where you got to imagine there's a lot of political pressure to keep the economy strong because, well, that's good for whoever's in office. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. It's the same thing. If you want to get reelected, you want to have a strong economy when it comes time for your reelection. And that's, of course, why Jamie Dimon goes back to saying that there's still risks of a hard landing in the United States, meaning there's still risks of a recession in the United States, although a lot of people have completely discounted this idea of any slowdown happening in the economy in the United States. Which brings us to number three, what do you need to know? If you're watching this video, you're probably a little bit more financially educated. You're more interested in financial education and you're interested in building your own wealth. You're interested in investing. Maybe you've already begun investing. And so the key here that you got to understand is that number one, our economy goes through cycles, period. Our economy goes up and it goes down. This has happened every decade for the last century. We see cycles like this, just like we see asset cycles. We see real estate prices go up and down and up and down. We see stock markets go up and down and up and down. Our economy also goes up and down and up and down. And so what you got to understand is that no market can go straight up or straight down forever. So what that means is you want to be able to win no matter which market you are in. And that means number one, you want to be able to win when markets are going up. And also number two, be able to find the opportunity when markets are going down. But in order for that to happen, you got to do three things. Number one is you got to be financially prepared. Number two is you got to be financially educated. And number three is you got to understand the trends. So when it comes to being prepared, that means you got to have cash aside to invest. Now, the way you invest is a different question. I'm going to go over that in this video. But the way you invest is really you got to have the money to invest, which means you can't spend all of your money. And so that means you got to control your finances, have money coming in from your job or your business, and then not all of your money goes out. And now you have this pile of cash to invest. And then the way you invest is going to depend on your strategy. And it depends on if you're going to invest in stocks or real estate or something else. It's going to depend on whether you're investing for cash flow or for growth. That's where you got to figure out your strategy. I have tons of videos on my channel where I talk about how to do that. The second thing is you got to be financially educated, which means now how do you pick your investments and how do you pick your investing strategy? Your financial education is all about now, what am I investing in and how am I investing in this thing? If I'm investing in real estate, how do you find a good property? What are your goals? How do you pick a good team? How do you actually manage the property and how do you maximize the cash flow? If you're investing in stocks, are you investing in index funds or ETFs or mutual funds? Are you investing in individual companies? Are you investing your money every week? Are you investing your money when you find a good opportunity? What is your strategy and what types of investments are you going to be making? That's what your financial education is all about. Again, I have a lot of resources on my channel going about that. You can read books on this topic. You can take classes on this topic. There's a lot of ways to invest in your financial education and you can also go out and do it to learn. I mean, you can do all of the things, read books, watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, and also go out to do it to build your financial education because, well, you got to do it. Investing is risky. You're going to lose money at some point and don't blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube. Okay, a little disclaimer on that. And number three is you got to understand the trends. And this is really just understanding now which 
industries you're going to be investing in. Because what you want to do now as an investor is you want to position your money. Like you're the captain of your money. And you want to be sending your money where the flow is going tomorrow, next year, the year after that, not where it was last year. That's what understanding the trends is all about. We do a lot of this in briefs media and market briefs, my newsletter. We try to cover what's happening. That way you can stay ahead of the curve and not be the person that's behind the curve. Because if you're just making decisions based off of what's happening in the news, you've already missed it. And this is where your job is to pay attention to what's happening and not be an emotional investor, but rather understand the trends that we can be a long-term investor, but also be ahead of what's happening in the markets. They innovated the way that they invest money and they've been able to get very good returns over the last number of years. And what the CEO of Bridgewater is saying now is that the next 10 years or 15 years of the economy might not be like the last 15 years. Take a look. When you look at the last 15 years, the stars have aligned for investors. It's been a tremendous period. 